Hey, what's up? Dave with Brazos Valley Strength. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about self handoffs or self unracks in the bench press. And I think that this video is a great example of a video that really requires a lot of context, other places to be able to get the most out of this specific topic. So I'm for sure gonna be referencing other bench press videos that I've made, specifically the leg drive video, the wrist position video, and the retraction video. So those three are going to be big, big parts of this. I don't know that you have to have seen those ahead of time to be able to get the most out of this, but if you have specific questions in any of those areas, drop me a comment, maybe I can direct you in the right direction, or watch those videos first and that can maybe uh, clarify some of your thoughts overall. And I'm going to be putting together a complete guide to bench press here pretty soon. I think I have most of the background videos made at this point, or at least after this one, to where I'll be able to do a pretty good job with that. And at this point, it really just comes down to the time that it takes to put together a you know, hour plus long video. So anyway, today we're talking about self handoffs. Now remember, I am talking mostly to power lifters on this channel with these videos. If you're not a power lifter, if you're just using these to get more out of your lifting in the gym, that's great. But this video is going to highlight some of the importance that self handoffs will give you, especially for competitions. Now, I think that either way, whether you use self handoffs or you don't, you have a spotter that can help give you the bar. I think so many of these principles, the things that we're gonna use to help make the self handoff better, will make you better at receiving a bar from a spotter in the first place. And that's gonna be important because I think even within the powerlifting population, I'm for sure going to encourage most people to use self handoffs, but some of the uh, certain populations even within powerlifters, grip width specifically, those lifters may struggle to be able to do these things at all. But I do think that even then, it'll be able to help with their process, help with them being able to receive the bar from the spotter because we'll limit some of the variability there in the first place. So that does lead me to the first biggest benefit, why we would want to use the self handoff at all. And it just comes down to consistency. So if both things are equal, if I can get the bar out of the rack on my own and feel confident that I'm in a good position versus receiving it from a spotter, I'm going to do it on my own every single time. If I'm in a gym and I'm having to ask random people in the gym to help give me a handoff to really make my training a whole lot better, or if I'm in a competition and I'm requiring somebody, a random person who I've never met or spoken before to give me a good handoff for me to get my third rep, you know, my heaviest bench PR I've ever done, I think that that worries me a little bit. So being able to do it on your own can really help you take advantage. It can, it can make you more self-reliant and that is going to be a really big deal. Now, some things that end up kind of hurting, making it really difficult for people in average gyms to be able to do this at all, a lot of times at commercial gyms, there's going to be a few things that really impact this. So the depth of the J-hooks or the length of the J-hooks, if you see my training in here, when I'm doing bench press, I use the ghost J hooks. So they have that little slope, kind of the, the deficit at the front so that the bar always comes to the front of the rack, right? Even the regular J hooks that I, you know, just the rogue kind of short J hooks that I would use, those don't have a very, very thick lip. So even though they're kind of deep, it's still not something that's a big deal for me to just kind of roll that bar to the, the front of the lip. And I think power lifters in normal gyms with competition racks have that same thing, right? And obviously in competition, the bar is not going to feed to the front of the rack. So just having that little, that, that smaller depth within the J hook, also the lip being smaller makes a really, really big difference. So if you're at a commercial gym, having those deeper uh, J hooks right there and potentially longer J hooks are for sure going to be an issue. Now we can overcome it every now and then I bench press at my commercial gym, especially for like feet up or something. And I'm able to do a good job of it, but I think it's, it's mostly because I've had practice here. But another big, big issue is how slick many of the commercial gym benches are or benches in general, even power lifters, many times they're training at gyms that have worn out upholstery on those benches and they're just sliding all over the place and it makes this really hard. And that mostly comes down to how important leg drive is going to be 
in the self unrack. So if you haven't watched the leg drive video, here's where it's gonna start to matter. So I'm gonna assume that you know what you're trying to create driving your body towards the rack. So if you lack that, if your bench is too slick, some things that you can do to help put bands on your bench press, or especially in commercial gyms, I really tell people to put a yoga mat on top of their bench press. It, it makes it really, really sticky, but also helps with the width of the bench press and a lot of times the height, because both of those things are going to usually be worse at commercial gyms. I, I train on this, this rogue competition pad, so it's the right height and width and everything, but it's you know nice and grippy and uh, you know tall those things really make a big difference. So some common issues that I think that people mess up just right away that make this a whole lot harder for them is setting up too far away from the rack. Uh, of course, this one is an issue and I'm not really sure where it comes from overall. I mean, I think obviously with commercial gyms having those, the J hooks um, in the way like that, it can, can really influence. People do need to set up a little bit further away from the, the rack, but a lot of times I see people set up really, really far away for kind of no reason at all. And, and I think that actually sometimes factors into one of the other issues that I, I see people having is they're setting the rack height too low. And it was funny, uh, whenever I trained, whenever I owned Brazos Valley Barbell and I trained up there, the a and powerlifting team would come in and train up there all the time. And, uh, and one of the things that was always a little bit comedic to me was it seemed like many of those lifters took pride in having the rack height as low as they possibly could. And so with them doing that, they were having to set up extremely far away from the rack to, to make their rack height kind of where they felt like they needed it to be. So then you're having people do handoffs and having to like place it way out over their bodies. Um, I, I think just with them having some sort of sense of pride of having the rack too low. So having the rack set in the correct position obviously is gonna make a big difference here, right? We just want enough clearance though, especially with heavy weight, right? Because we, as it gets heavier, we're, we're, we may not be able to clear it quite as far. So having it at the right position to where I can clear the rack and then settle back down without wasting too much energy is going to be a big deal. But I think the biggest mistake that people make is actually setting up too close to the rack because people struggle with those other things, right? They know that being too far away is gonna be an issue and the too low is a problem. So people sit, situate themselves way, way under the rack. It makes the unrack easy, but then it makes the press way worse, right? Because with our bar path, if we're trying to touch lowish on our chest and then press back over our shoulders, that bar ends up slamming into the J hooks and then we end up creating problems with the bench press just in general. So. Having, having yourselves in the right spot to where you're in a good position to make sure that your bench press is not affected by the self unrack obviously is a huge deal because this should not make your bench press worse. If we're doing this correctly, it should hopefully improve your bench press and it shouldn't take away anything from your pressing ability just because you're having to make compromises there in the first place. So what do we need to do to make ourselves successful with unracking the bar on our own? And I think this is kind of where uh, my last bench press video, the retraction video, becomes really important. So I'm not going to use this section necessarily to argue more of my points in that video, but I think it's going to be important to frame it with that in mind, that my feeling in the bench press is that people over retracting their shoulders or feeling like they really, really need to maintain their back tightness in the bench press and maintain their retraction, that that ends up making the self unrack way worse. And to be clear, I, I'm not saying that we need to just make compromises, right? Like if I felt that maintaining retraction in the bench press was a big deal, I would absolutely encourage people to use a handoff to maintain that. So to me, this is not really a compromise, but a lot of people who feel like they need to maintain their retraction really struggle here. When I asked on Instagram, what were some of the main issues that people had? You know, even after the last video I posted, a lot of the comments were saying, how do I maintain retraction? How do I keep my back tight? And my thought there is like, well, you kind of don't need to, but 
Secondly, beyond that, I think so often people are confusing the feeling of retraction and the feeling of depression or their lats kind of pulling their shoulders down towards their hips or bringing their rib cage up to the barbell, right? So those things are going to be more so depression and then just extension in the back and they're not retraction. So some retraction is okay, but we don't need to feel like we're keeping our shoulders pinched while unracking the barbell. So I think that that's important. That video I think will matter a lot. And if you're going into this trying to maintain your shoulders as squeezed as you possibly can, then it's just not, this, this video isn't gonna work for you, I, I think is the main point. And you might want to analyze a little bit of what you're doing in the bench press, first of all, right? So beyond that though, being able to maintain a good posture in general, right? Maintaining that tension that we're creating, pulling our shoulders down, reaching our rib cage up to the bar, all that stuff does matter. And I think a lot of times people do lose their back position, right? And let's, let's say they're thinking about it the right way. They're trying to pull their shoulders down towards their hips, reach their rib cage up to the bar, create that good arch. A lot of times that is back position that people are talking about. It's not just retraction. So bringing your hips up, keeping your hips up when you're unracking the bar is probably the simplest and most effective tool to give people a better opportunity to unrack the bar. So what this will do is it will help you with leg drive, be able to be driving back towards the rack and with the bar being able to push down into the bench. So those two things together can help pin you in a good spot. And when you unrack the bar, and I'm gonna come back to how we're actually unracking the bar, but once the bar is off the rack and you're in your hands, your hips are still going to be in the air. You have that opportunity from there to be able to settle into that position and actively with your legs, with your lats, be able to pull your hips down into the position and create a really good amount of tension and rigidity through your body and set yourself in a good position. So absolutely, if you are doing a self unrack, I, I think it's unanimous that, that everybody in the world who's doing a self unrack should unrack with their hips in the air because otherwise it is really difficult because we're gonna lose a lot of that ability. We're not gonna be able to drive down into the bench quite as much. And a lot of us may feel like we're sliding across the bench. So especially if you already have a slick bench and you're not picking your hips up, then you may just feel like you totally get flat. So picking your hips up and using the effort from the barbell, pushing yourself down into the bench with your legs, helping you pin in that position fixes many of these issues overall. So getting the bar out of the rack though, for almost everyone comes from some degree of protraction. So this is the important part I think. And, and this is where tying it all into the other videos makes a really big difference. So I'm not trying to maintain that protracted position. With me picking my hips up and getting myself in a good position to be able to get my back in a good position once I set my hips down, I should be in a good spot to be able to slightly protract my shoulders and get the bar off the rack and then settle back down into a relatively neutral position while still maintaining a really good arch. And that right there is I think where people really struggle. So. This I, I think does bring up some of the limitations from certain groups or specifically bench press widths. So what I mentioned earlier is that generally speaking, wider bench grips do a whole lot worse with the self unrack. And trying to think about like what really, uh, what the reasoning would be here is I think it's two main reasons, right? Is that we're, when we're in a really wide grip, for one, our triceps extending, doesn't really add much verticality to the bench press, right? If I'm really close, my triceps extending does add height to the barbell, but if I'm already really wide, right, my, my triceps extending just doesn't really create that much space. And from that really wide position, I don't have much ability to protract my shoulder with all that weight, right? So if you are a very wide grip bench presser, and I think wide maybe needs a definition here, wide relative to your frame, right? I bench press with my middle finger on the ring. I could go one finger wider, but even then, if I, if I was with my index finger max width, I would not consider that nearly as wide as say like 
a 50 kilo, kilo female, right? Who's all the way max width, right? So relative to your body structure, the width is really going to matter. So closer grip bench pressers will be able to protract significantly more. I mean, you can just kind of visually see from this position, I can protract way, way more than I can with my arms wider, right? So both of those things are going to limit the height that people are able to get from the barbell in the first place. So if you are a small person with a very wide grip, you may really, really struggle with the ability to get the bar off the rack on your own at all. But just for maybe a little bit of context here, I think one of the main things that people push back a little bit in my video with retraction, a lot of the people who were talking about it were very wide benchers. And, and I think that this point right here, I, I think kind of brings up the importance there that in that very, very wide grip, we are sacrificing some of our pecs ability to produce force for the advantages of the range of motion, right? So we're sacrificing that uh, total function, the, the, the total force production ability versus the advantages that we get from being able to reduce the work that we have to do. And the net gain is more weight on the bar, right? So that's, I think, an important thing. So, so you being wide and really retracting probably still does limit your pec's ability to work well but there still may be a net gain. So on average, I'm talking to people who are not super wide grip, you know, really short range of motion ventures. And that's relevant here. And it's also relevant in the last video. So to really get the bar off the rack comfortably, I think for most people it requires a good bit of aggression. And, and I do want to say that when I'm unracking the barbell, I'm not really thinking about protraction. I'm not really thinking about reaching my shoulders off the rack, right? Just like I said, I'm not specifically thinking about retraction either. I'm not really thinking about protraction. I'm thinking just push far and drive myself down on the bench and doing it really aggressively. So once I'm clear and I settle, then sure, my, my shoulders settle back into a slight degree of retraction, but I'm not really trying to pull them all the way there. One of the other big things that makes a really big difference here is what you're doing with your wrists. So I just, a few weeks ago, published that video on wrist position in the bench press. And I talked about how important I think it is to have your wrists broken back slightly. Now, everything that I said in that video is almost going to be the opposite in this video, but for the exact same reasons. So if you see me when I'm bench pressing, what you'll see all the time is that I start with my wrists very straight, the opposite of what I tell people to do when they're actually benching. But it's for those same reasons that when my wrist is straight, it's going to bias the weight of the bar towards, towards my hips, right? Out over my body. I don't want that when I'm actually bench pressing, but when I'm unracking the bar, I absolutely do, right? If the bar is closer to my head than it is over my body, I want to give that bar some bias towards my body. So I straighten out my wrists and press it from there because it makes it so that I now have leverage to be able to move the bar out over my body and settle. And even with that demonstration, we can see that there's a number of things going on there that when I bias towards that more neutral position, I also flare my elbows to get more under the bar and then I let them settle back into that position, but my body is in a position to where my lats can still get tight. They can still drive through my body the way that they need to. So I'm not really worried about the risk of shoulder elevation or things like that because of the forces that I've created pushing myself into the bench press in the first place. So all of these things kind of go together to create a good cohesive system, but be careful there, right? So I, I know with me saying that just, just right there, I don't want that to be too, too dramatic. I don't want people dropping the barbell on their face ease into that part. It, it's taken some practice and some, you know, timing work for me to really feel comfortable with how much I want my wrist to be straight and settle back into that position. So don't over straighten your wrist and have the bar fall off the rack and land on your face and really get you into a, a bad position there. So um, anyway, I wanted to make sure that people are being safe, but that is one of the biggest things. And people mentioned it in my comments on Instagram too, was that I think that, you know, my last video about the, the wrist back position, people are trying to unrack 
in that position. And all those same reasons, right? We get kind of stuck in this position and we just don't have the leverage over the barbell to be able to clear the rack and get ourselves into a, a strong position to press from in the first place. So for the short version of really what makes the biggest difference to actually get a good self unrack is find the right J hook height for you, find a distance away from the J hook. And I, I guess maybe uh, my recommendation with that is somewhere around eye level. I, I think sometimes people recommend it being a little bit lower, maybe like nose or mouth. I think somewhere around the eyes is probably a good spot. Um, it's just gonna take a little bit of trial and error to, to really feel how much space that you need. Some people are gonna be a little bit closer, some people need to be a little bit further away and can still be comfortable. Nose or eyes, I think is probably a good spot that most people should be and still have a good distance away from your shoulders. So find the right rack height, find the right distance away from the rack, and then pick your hips up. That's, that is the biggest thing. Keep your hips in the air, drive hard towards the rack, drive hard into the bench, and don't really worry if your shoulders protract some, and that's okay. So hopefully this video helped you. Like I said, I got more bench press videos coming, or at least I got a, a really big bench press video coming. Uh, at some point, we'll put all this together. If you have comments, let me know, you know, if you have questions, I, I you know, try to have discussions with people as, as much as possible. We'll try to keep them on topic and I'll direct you to other videos um, if you have questions on those. So if you did like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.